everyone. A warm welcome to all the IMA students who are the part of this session. I hope students out here are able to hear me well. If in case you're finding any glitch, yes or no, you can just put a message in the Q&A box. Let me know if all the students out here are able to hear me. All right, let's begin. Okay, so again, a warm welcome to all the students and the participants who are the part of this session. The session today is all about understanding the effective ways of communication for product managers. I understand a lot of you who are sitting here for the session are looking forward to make your career in PM, which is product management. But it's important for you to first understand a couple of things. One is what does project managers or product managers other actually do? And second is what are the important skill sets that you need to work upon to make a successful career in it? We have got two senior experts in house who will be taking the session today. We have got Tulika Rani, who's the product manager at Microsoft. And we have got Preeti Singh, uh, who is a senior manager, who was a senior manager with uh, McKinsey and Company, and now is an independent consultant. They both will be taking you through the journey of what a product manager will be actually like, uh, with respect to defining and describing how the life of product managers actually is, what are the important challenges that you might have to face with respect to communication, and how can you make your career successfully in it. A warm welcome to Tulika and Professor Preeti, and welcome on board. Thank you so much. Thanks, Abhijit. Yeah, so we can begin be now. Yeah, yeah. So I think you guys have also prepared some case study, which is going to make them more engaging and give them the real experience about some simulation what they can actually work upon while they are working with some of the great companies out here. So we can formally start the session now. Um, I would request you to take the presentation live and start the mm -hmm. session with all the students out here. Okay, sure. Is the screen visible? Yeah. Yes. yes. We have to keep it in the slideshow mode. Yeah. All right. So just an overview. What we're doing in this session, as Abhijit said, is talking about the skills that product managers need. And the focus is on communication, where uh, the, the challenge that product managers face in communication is that they are uh, dealing with or communicating with multiple stakeholders from very... Uh, varied backgrounds and expertise. So how do you communicate with such a range of uh, stakeholders every day? I'm going to hand over to Tulika at this point. Hello, good morning, everyone. So as you can see the screen that you can see, it's a clip art that is visible to you. So definitely it's time for some lights, camera and action. So guys, can you quickly share in the chat that what skills according to you movie directors should have to be a successful one? Can I see you guys entering some interesting answers in the chat? So students out here can use the Q&A section or the chat section to communicate with the, uh, the faculties and the mentors that we have. Okay, I see Rahul is replying something, understanding the text tags. So here we are talking about movie director, guys. You can be creative as much as you can. Okay, the perception, Bharti, good one. Okay, that's good, Shiva. Understanding to everyone's perspective. Guys, come on. Switch on your creative side. Yeah. In QA, we have one response saying time management. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay, guys. So I think uh, let's move to the next slide and I'll just 
give you a perception. I know everybody is talking about perception here, and I will give you a perception and try to draw a parallel between product managers and movie directors. So we are shifting from lights, camera, action to lights, camera, and product management, and see how we can see the similarities between them. So first of all, to start with vision. So similar to a director, a product manager also envisions the final product and guides the team in bringing the vision to life. So that is very critical skill that both should have. The next one is the feedback. So here, what we say is that continuous feedback loops are very crucial for both directors and product managers so that they can keep on refining their work and ensure that it is resonating with the target audience. That's the key. Next is adaptability. Like you can see in the life of a director, they keep on navigating through different scenes, challenges. So similarly, a product manager, he or she must adapt to changes in the market trends and the user feedback. So next, we are coming to the innovation. So you guys can see that, you know, everywhere we encourage nowadays, a lot of creativity, innovation. So that is a field which is full of that. And the good news is that even product manager is a kind of role which is also encouraging creativity and innovation. It is important for both. You can see that for the directors as well as the product manager so that you can deliver a memorable end product. And next, what it comes important is the budgeting, which is like managing resources effectively. It is very essential. Like whether you are optimizing a film budget for scenes or you are allocating the resources for product development, you won't see much difference. And according to me, I feel that which is playing nowadays a critical role in every aspect is empathy. It's like you have to understand the strengths, the personalities of the team. It is a key in either of the case, whether you're working as a movie director or you're working as a product manager. And how with this will be reflected? This can be reflected in the way how you communicate, which is the backbone. And that is what is the whole topic about today, communication. So like just as a director, it works with a diverse cast and crew, right? Like a product manager will also need to collaborate with cross-functional teams. So your teams will have a mix of developers, designers, marketeers, salespeople. So we'll see that communication will be the backbone of, you know, calling you as a successful product manager. So in further slides, we'll discuss the strategies and the best practices for, you know, effectively communicating with these diverse set of group. So remember, guys, it's like what we are doing is it's all about orchestrating a successful production, whether a movie director is going for a blockbuster movie or we product managers are going to create a ground baking product. So there is no difference at all. So I hope you guys will know that in your playground, you are the movie directors. So yeah, now moving next to where we'll see that how a product manager has to deal with stakeholder management, because after all, you guys are building the product in collaboration. So he or she needs to communicate with multiple stakeholders on any given day. So every stakeholder, if you will see, they have a unique way of thinking as such, which is like contributing to something which is unique, even to the product strategy. Like, as you are seeing that we have called about different stakeholders around PM. There are sales team, there's an engineering team, there's a marketing team, there's a leadership team, there's a design team, and you have customers who's the king. So a designer who will approach a product, it will be very different than you can expect an engineer to approach the same product. While the approach of a salesperson would be entirely different from an executive leader. So let's review the various type of stakeholders that you might to collaborate and then explore to how to keep everyone on the same page and we foster the collaboration. So now let's start like with the sales team. So when you're talking to a sales team, you cannot bring the technical jargons to them. You have to highlight to them that how the product is going to solve the customer's problem. You know, you have to share on how the product compares to the competitors. Now, similarly, when we move to the engineering team, if you talk about them, the competitive advantage, they won't get it. That is not their language. So to them, you have to discuss the technical aspects, the challenges. You know, you have to dive into the nitty gritty details that the engineering team would understand. Now, similarly, when we come to the marketing team, they would want to understand that what is the product positioning 
and you have to share the insights of the target audience that if i am having a product who is who are my target audience how is the product positioned in the market and what is their preferences and then you can align the product features with marketing campaign goals so that you are giving the message similarly leadership will not be at all interested you know in knowing the detail and the nth level of the product they will mainly be focusing on what is the strategic goals what's the overall progress what's the performance indicators to talk about the product how are we impacting in terms of the revenue and the organization you are working for similarly talking to the design team you will have to focus on the desired user experience how the ui should look like how the user interface should interact so you have to use a lot of visuals a lot of mock ups a lot of prototypes to convey so there you have to emphasize how the product is going to solve their problem how is it going to improve their lives or their business that you are working for so you'll have to share some like real world examples the customer testimonials you have to even provide the avenues for customer support and you know get their feedback to keep on continuously improving the product so yeah i'm sure that you would have noticed that how in each case the communication style is shifting so that it resonates with the specific concerns and interests of the respective stakeholders so it's all about guys tailoring the message to ensure the relevance and the engagement from each group like a product manager must master the stakeholder management and they should explain ideas in ways that each product that each stakeholder understands so i think now i'm handing over to preeti who will walk you through the strategies for communicating effectively over to you preeti thanks tulika so taking off from what tulika said the fact that you have to as product managers in fact in any role that you are you are going to be communicating with multiple stakeholders now specific to since we are talking about product managers here what are some of the things that what is a strategy that can help you to communicate effectively with all of these people who have very different profiles and very different needs okay so let's talk about a framework that can make life easier for you a uh, just a little bit of thought if you uh, that you put in before you start communicating and this is a skill that you learn so it becomes easier with practice but it's a very simple framework that says who that is who why and what so who is my audience why am i communicating and what is my message who is my audience why am i communicating and what is my main message who is my audience what do you need to know about your audience before you start communicating with them do you want to just share in the chat it will be lovely to hear some views even if you're not a product manager or not planning to be uh, you still need to know who your audience is so what are some of the things that you need to know okay demographic yes bharti interest exactly yes namita how interested are they what are their interests and how interested are they in your in what you are saying let's take a couple more no okay i'll move on so here is a list of questions that you can that you need to keep in mind these are questions that you have for yourself uh that for which you need to do your homework so what is the profile as uh, bharti said demographic uh, why are they here you know what do they want out of this are they are they here even when you're you know speaking to a large 
uh, group of people. So in, in our situation, for instance, Tulika and I, while preparing for this session, talked about why are all of you here? Why will you come into this session? What is it that you would be interested in? Uh, what do you already know? So let's say you know from A to X. Now, I don't need to spend time on all of that then. I just need to talk about Y and Z. Yeah. Uh, are they receptive or resistant? So when you're talking to your stakeholders, you need to know whether they're going to be open to your point of view or are they going to be closed and you know disagree with you? They have a different point of view and you need to actually convince them. And finally, what is the power dynamic at play? As you enter the corporate space, you will realize that there are hierarchies that you need to be aware of. You need to understand who the decision maker is and therefore what uh, you know who you're talking to. So this is a who, understanding the audience. Let's move on to why. Why are we communicating? Every piece of communication, whether it is verbal or written, an email, a WhatsApp message, there is a purpose to it. Right? There is an objective. What could be that objective? It could be, here is a not a comprehensive list, but a general list of the common reasons why we communicate. It could be to clarify to be clarify a piece of information. It could be come to complain. We do a lot of this. So you, it's a very common reason why we communicate. Uh, entertain. Stand-up comics do this, but so does you know the clown in the office or when you want to lower the temperatures in, a, in an emotionally charged room, you want to just you know bring in a little bit of humor and entertain people. Um, inform. Just let people know about something that is happening. Uh, motivate. There is motivation is going to be a big piece of, as we've said in the title, uh, you're going product managers are the general managers of the digital era. So even if you're not leading uh, with authority, you are going to be leaders. So what do leaders need to do? They need to motivate their teams, um, their peers, their, their subordinates, and sometimes even the leadership. Persuade. Persuading people uh, is also influencing someone about a different point of view. So someone thinks that uh, X is better, but you think Y is better. How are you going to convince them? And finally, recommend. Um, like I said, this is not a comprehensive list. There might be other. There are other reasons why we communicate, but this is a pretty indicative list of common reasons. So let me demonstrate to you how um, the message will change based on uh, the why and the who. Before before that. Uh, can you take a guess at what the purpose is? What is the why of each of these, the list that you have in the blue box? So in the chat, if you can just take a crack at saying, okay, what is the objective? What is the why of speeches in parliament? Okay. Our chat is very silent. <laughs> Influence. Yes, Ayan. Absolutely. Okay. Job interviews. Okay. It could be to clarify and it could be also to persuade because we are uh, selling our expertise and wanting someone to hire us. Uh, Instagram. What do you think is the main purpose or main why of posting on Instagram? Entertain. Absolutely. Um, Namita, I hope you weren't saying job interviews are to entertain. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, what is FAM? Is this something that I'm missing? Is someone, Sachin, can you help me with the full form of FAM? Fame. Okay, absolutely. I thought it was some Gen Z lingo that I'm not aware of. Okay, fame. Yes, I want to be famous and I want to increase my followership. So I post on Instagram. You're getting the idea, right? So sales pitches would obviously be to persuade someone or recommend something. Uh, TV panel shows. That's a good one. So TV panel shows. Is it to inform?
complete <laughs> yeah it's not on the list but it's more like it's it's yeah it could be to complain but it's also uh, to sensationalize to yell and to you know put your point of view across in in uh, it's it's almost to fight right the word that comes to mind when you're watching these panel shows is to fight okay so we get the idea of of the who and the what moving on from there let's see the effect so let's see the framework who www who why what in action effect of why let's read the sentence you should watch oppenheimer instead of barbie two big movies last year and there was a lot of debate on which one people should watch and there was a whole recommendation uh, we're making this pop culture and fun so that you know re the research says you are likely to recall this much more so when you go away from this session you will remember that there was uh, you know how to use the framework for oppenheimer versus barbie and therefore how do you take it to the work so what is this the why of this is different from the why of this sentence which is barbie is a good movie but since you're so interested in biographies i think you will enjoy oppenheimer more there is a subtle difference there's a nuance in the second one uh, there's a subtle difference between these two sentences and the difference is the why in the first case it is a recommendation it's straight off saying this is what you should do this is what i you know i think everybody should do. and that's how we often share advice uh the second one is to persuade you know i'm giving you a reason so i'm trying to persuade you i'm trying to change your mind because we are assuming this person wants to see barbie and what i am saying to them knowing who they are right so i understand who they are and therefore my why is to persuade and therefore i say it differently we look at one more fun example which is the effect of who uh let's say your parents want you to get married this year and we are assuming you don't want to get married this year um so how would you say what would you say to your parents you probably just say i don't want to get married for the next two years i'm just not ready okay uh to some of you this will resonate maybe if you are facing that pressure um but essentially with parents we can just say right we can just state but imagine uh your partner wants to get married this year right now you can't just tell your partner that in the same way you can't use the same sentence unless you are you know then you just want to break up the relationship uh which will prevent the marriage so i don't want to get married for the next two years will not work what will work is maybe this yeah much more convincing sweet you know caring saying look i do want to get married but just not yet okay we should focus on our careers right now let's spend some carefree time you know marriage comes with pressure so you see the difference of how the same message changes based on who you're speaking okay the final one is what is your message so this is on this we have just one big tip for you and that is if you look at this paragraph i'll just read it out quickly so that i usually invite people to read but i think since this group is so silent um i'm just going to read it myself so i have been so busy over the last few days that i've had no time to plan my our vacation how will we get hotel rooms at the last minute you know there was such a fantastic such fantastic deals going but we missed all of them because of bad planning we keep changing the dates if we don't have the dates how can i book the flights these days you need to book months in advance i'm sure we will not be able to afford even the low cost airlines now in any case they are just called low cost they make up for it by charging a bomb for the ice cold samosas they serve and i can't handle those stopovers thank god at least we all agreed on the destination that was no small feat i'm starting to panic now there is so much to do which hotel did you stay in when you went last year did they have wifi okay what what is this person trying to say for this i would like some responses in chat if you hear someone saying all of this what is your take away where are our usual suspects namita sachin bharti and 
others please let's let's hear your voices too what is this person saying Yeah, I'm getting so tempted to respond. Yeah, go ahead, Tulika. Please respond. <laughs> If I can just say that I'm not able to understand anything. Right, right, and yeah, so many questions, Namita. Yes, absolutely. Can't understand. That is the big thing, right? Uh, if you're familiar with Hindi, this is something that we would do in class. Kavi kya kehna chahta hai. right so this is exactly that where we are so confused and this these are real situations you know people might you might listen to someone speaking or write read an email and wonder what does this person want are they asking me a question what what do they want me to do with all of this information is this just person just venting do they want me to just listen what is it right so when you're faced with a situation like this we can't do anything about the people who are not on this webinar right so but everyone who is here um it, i'm going to give you one tip which is the magic of synthesis so there's actually just one sentence in which you can if you start with that one sentence this whole paragraph this whole rant starts to make sense which is to say i need help to plan my vacation yeah if that is your subject line or if that is your first sentence in an email everything else makes sense because now my mind has understood this person needs my help to plan my to plan their vacation uh finalize dates book tickets book hotel room now i can actually do something about it. yeah so you will face many such situations and all we are saying is don't be the person who writes this kind of a message don't be the person who speaks like this where you're leaving the other person thinking kabhi kya kehna chahta right so we are now going to move on to some case studies these are some real situations what we've talked about is who why what how a message changes based on who your audience is and why you're communicating and we'll see some examples of that through this case study again handing over to tulika thanks priti the next line okay so i just read it out to give you the context and the problem statement and i know that we don't have much time you know otherwise we could have planned some breakout sessions and discussed how we would have done so in the interest of time we'll even let you know what are our thoughts so the context is what that you are a product manager at a leading it firm and this is your problem statement which you have got as a product manager that you have a task that you are tasked with revamping a fitness app for a well established health and wellness company and the app has been losing users due to outdated features and a lack of engagement the stakeholders include the technical team design team sales team and existing app users or you call it as customers so what is our exercise is that write mails to all your stakeholders addressing the situation and before we jump into the answer i just want to relate to whatever we have discussed as of now uh, that preeti has very like correctly called out that it's so important to know your audience so that is going to be your first step to showcase your stakeholder communication skills is to know your audience and then different state uh, stakeholders they have like different needs their different expectations the different languages that they understand and the different preferences so for example executives want will want very concise and high level updates but your technical team will want very detailed and technical specifications so also to know your audience what is a good thing to do is that you should also do some research and analysis on their roles what is their goal what is their challenge what is their pain point what kind of communication they prefer so you need to understand their communication styles as well you know what preferences what channels so this will 100% help you tailor your message your tone and your format so that it suits to each of the stakeholder so giving you this context and just recapping what we did we can now move to one of the mails just to showcase that how we are writing it to our uh, sales team i think that's the next one right okay this is with the technical team that we are writing 
so uh, if you can just see i'm just reading out the mail to you the hi team our fitness app is facing challenges with outdated features leading to user attrition and i'm seeking your technical expertise you know you can see the emphasis right it's a technical expertise that i'm reaching out to you so that we revamp the app for better performance and user engagement so now let's schedule a meeting to discuss potential solutions and align on the technical road map so you are just talking to a technical team it's very evident and then what are you expecting from the technical team so these are the key points that you are expecting from the team to come up with the inputs when you are collaborating with them the first one is what you want is performance assessment so you want them to conduct a thorough assessment of the current technical infrastructure to identify areas for improvement in the app performance similarly next one you are talking is related to very specific features alignment so that the existing features they can evaluate and they can suggest do you want some additional features or do you want to revamp the existing features and bring some latest trends and user preferences the last one we are talking about is the integration of latest technologies like just go ahead and explore the integration of emerging technologies and you could elevate the app's functionality so this is how you're talking when when you're doing the communication with the technical team do you guys think if you write the same mail to your sales team or if you write the same mail to your you know leadership team giving the update of the product it will definitely not go good for you and i just feel scared that it will not be even good for your job so this is what you know um, how the style how the preferences how the language everything comes into picture so you can see what i and preeti have been saying since the beginning that how communication establishes the backbone because this you are the first interface who is letting the other folks also know about you know what you should talk about the product what message you are delivering it to them so as one persona you have to have clarity about so many different personas around you if you are not clear your product will also not come out clear let me be very honest so you are such a critical part in the whole you know product situation so this is how you are communicating to the technical team now to the sales team the everything up and down of the mail kind of remains the same we are again seeing that i want your input regarding the sales pitch of the product and then you are sharing the key points that you want them to come up with the inputs first being the market insights so that they can bring observations to you how the current market trends is looking out to you you know and they, they can highlight and provide the competitive advantage how competitors are looking how are they being successful or what is the point that we are missing or we should inculcate then use our preferences and look for their feedback and obviously the value proposition of the product if we see that it has become any different from the previous what we used to have so this is how we are communicating to the sales team so you can see you know how we communicated to the technical and since there is no similarity at all there is no parity but you are talking about the same problem statement the context is same the person is same but you see how it is switching so similarly we have for the other teams as well like for the design team we are mainly focusing about you know how the navigation of the layout should look like how the overall visual appeal should be should we change the colors should we bring something to you know um in, encourage the engagement from the users then we are also proposing that can you come up with some visual refresh and interactive elements so that we have we can boost the user engagement and then we can encourage prolonged app usage then similarly like we are talking from the accessibility and inclusivity perspective that are we missing out any target audience is it like something we are not making a product inclusive so you know our way of thinking is shifting when we are talking to different sets of people so this example is mainly to showcase and the case studies to call about that same situation different sets of stakeholders your style is diff getting different but you are the same person communicating so this is the main i can say the the uh, hero ingredient in the whole recipe of the product management is the communication and and one thing that i have personally learned from my seniors who keep on saying that you just over communicate but communication should not stop you should not think maybe the person might understand it's okay let the person understand you explain that person like some one standard kit like some second standard kit over communicate but don't stop communication so that is the backbone and the critical part and uh, then i think yeah this uh, we have the other team as well we have designed the communication i would uh, say that since the deck will come you you can just uh, uh, absorb it at your own pace and just read through it and see that how it comes out to you
Perfect. I hope this case study was useful for you. Uh, we've based it on, you know, very real situations that product managers deal with. And since Tulika is a product manager, she has dealt with situations like these. Okay, so moving on, what we've done till now is talked about, you know, one sliver, one small uh, piece of, or rather a tip on how you would communicate. Now, let's just zoom out and talk about how this fits into the larger HSB universe. Um, HSB has a leadership track, which has three themes. It focuses on TCL, which is Think, Communicate, and Lead. And we're spending a lot of time on this to make sure that our students are equipped with these workplace skills as they go out into the world, uh, to the working, you know, to the workplace. And these are crucial workplace skills, uh, which are based on surveys, on on studies, on dialogues with, uh, you know, conversations with recruiters. So our recruiters are asking for these skills, and therefore we are spending so much time on making sure that our Students are equipped with these skills and not just domain expertise. So obviously domain expertise and understanding product management, uh, product design, all of that is really, really important. But if you, this will give you an edge compared to others in the workplace market, in the job market. Okay. Um, so just a quick overview of the leadership track. Like I said, it's think, communicate and lead. There are communicate, as you can see, is what we did was a very tiny bit of this communication is a very is is pr pretty much, uh, you know, uh, not just a large piece of what we are doing, but also ongoing. So, you know, throughout the other courses, also, we are going to make sure that uh, as you're learning the theory and, uh, you know, the frameworks and academic research on how what what is good communication, you also get a chance to practice. So the focus is really on practice and um, we can share this with you, but essentially I just want to highlight that the emphasis of the TCL track at HSB is on experiential learning. Uh, there's a mix of classroom work, classroom workshops, guest lectures, you can hear uh, viewpoints from academics and practitioners. So you have a pretty balanced view. Uh, there are so many perspectives that we need. You can't just have one perspective as you go out into the world. And this will really lay the foundation for the crucial works, workplace skills that you need um, as, as soon as you get placed. Okay, uh, so I'll end here and we'll uh, open up for questions, whether you want to ask, you're you know, welcome to ask questions about what we just talked about, uh, about effective communication, about the framework that we discussed, about the product manager's role, about what skills you need to have to become a product manager, anything you want to ask about HSB, it's a completely blank canvas. So go ahead and we'll all try and answer as many questions as we can. Students, if you have any questions, please put it in a Q&A or a chat box, we will take it ahead. We also have the core HSB team here, uh, Professor Sujit Kumar and Indrajit. So we can, you know, they can take the HSB specific questions if you have any. We have one question in chat box. Turika, the question is for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Vati asking, can you share a specific example of a challenging product launch or project and how you navigated obstacles to achieve success? Yeah, I can state you that, that what has been a challenge. So, uh, in my case, the challenge that I had seen was basically related to convincing one of the stakeholders that why they should remove a third party tool and they should leverage the indigenous product further. But definitely that required more efforts, more work. So in terms of impact, if you see, 
there was no overall problem the problem was actually a solved one what we were trying to do is even reduce further the third party cost at why to even have a third party product but that was not a priority but we were thinking that was a stepping step, stepping stone to go ahead in uh, promoting the indigenous product the uh, core product that we have it so that convincing was not only a trouble to the customer i would say that was even a trouble to talk to my manager so my manager was also like that why are we not looking to the other side of the problem that a customer is facing but what i had in my mind is that if i can achieve this i can build up further capabilities on top of it so i started sitting very closely with my technical team i started sitting very closely with my marketing team to understand that what is uh, the preferences and the languages which i can talk to my customers that if they get convinced and if then the requirements come up from their side then even my manager would not stop me so rather than convincing two different stakeholders i just targeted one because if i'll do one the other two will automatically be solved so and yes i have to say that my uh, team around me was extremely extremely supportive we really spent a lot of time and it also helped me know the product even better which i was not aware before so this way i think um, ultimately the discussion it took a turn and it got prioritized and yes as for me as of now this is one something that i have faced it was not just from the external environment but even internally i could uh, see a bit of heat there so i hope that answers you bharti and if you can see communication again came into play communication and definitely skills around it yeah the next question is from namita okay. how do you stay informed about industry trends emerging technologies um hmm tulika do you want to take that yeah i think this is a very generic question if i don't know if it is something which you are trying to understand very specific to product management but if you are talking very generic what i do is i keep on uh, reading a lot of consulting papers like if you go and just read about you know the gartners of the world if you read these deloitte they roll out a lot of papers just a second so i think for me it has uh, helped in that way that i keep on reading about the product prithik if you don't mind can you uh, like add up just give me a one minute of time sure go ahead yeah so like tulika is saying you know it it is domain specific so if you're talking about uh, i mean general information industry trends social media is you know you have so much there um but also specific you know industry level so i am my default place is forbes um mckinsey quarterly and because that's my area of interest but for product managers i'm sure there are some specific ones that you know like tulika said deloitte and um, uh, gartner groups um but yeah essentially just you know also your peer group so your mentors you know people in the in the industry who have more experience so they might know more about what's happening um and one interesting place where i've noticed a uh, lot of new information comes in is all these edtech platforms because they are you know immediately even if it's linkedin right they are not only talking about the emerging technology but even you know but also giving you uh an insight into it and even a maybe even a training program a short you know week a, a one day seminar on it so that really helps rather than having surface knowledge okay rahul asks how do you ensure alignment and understanding between technical teams and non technical stakeholders when conveying product related information okay uh, so, sorry okay i'll go ahead yeah so it's mainly that um, i will just give you one example suppose if a technical team says that the integration is not working and if i have to speak the same language to convince my leadership team that they, they will not they might not understand that the integration between the two systems are not working so it becomes like one system is not able to communicate to the other system if i am passing an information to one system the other system is not able to receive that information so you are breaking the same technical language into a very simple straightforward language to your other audience so it's not that the context is changing it's just that 
and they need not even understand the same language but being a product manager you definitely should understand and it should not be very deep it's okay if you understand this much that okay the integration between the two systems are not working that's good enough now you don't need to understand that within the integration if any attribute is not working if any particular field is not working that is not your headache anymore that so much of detail your technical team will take into picture but if a problem statement is arising to you which is talking from the integration perspective and then you have to communicate to the non technical team your problem then you can talk it in this way that whatever message i'm trying to send from my system a the message is not getting delivered to system b so what channel should we work upon how should we establish that channel between the two systems that they are able to successfully communicate so this is how we talk about it like breaking one simple technical um sentence into a very plain english and straight forward and it, it's even better if you can draw the analogies you know like if you talk about the apis in simple language you can say that okay you are giving the order and you are receiving some information that is how the apis work in technical terms now if you have to draw the metaphor you can draw that you are sitting in a restaurant and you are placing the order and when you place the order the waiter will go and provide you the orders after some time so the waiter who is going and coming up with the order to you is nothing but the apis so you are just drawing the you know metaphor and that is how you break one information into a plain english language and then you draw the metaphors and analogies and just speak to the different stakeholders around you that's how i do yeah just to add to that uh, because rahul has talked about alignment so not just you know us the product manager communicating if you take it a step further and say okay these are two people coming from two different worlds one is focused on the technical side the other is focused on non technical how do you get them to align on something and i think one uh, one thing from a non product manager uh, <laughs> a point is you know just getting two people aligned on something requires persuasion skills and again that is something that we are you know you can use logic you can use emotion you can use credibility so the fact that you know you have the expertise and they need to listen to you or saying immediately that you know the client is most important so whatever the values of the organization are right bringing them up saying this is what we are uh, our target is or our values are or this is our culture this is where we be focus on you know it's customer centric um things like that so using those values using those um uh, using the data saying data shows this so this evidence to make your point those are the things that you can use to align people across uh, universes okay uh, ayan says can you please share the link to the hsb website where i can find more information about the institute sure uh, indrajit would you mind doing that please in the chat just easier uh we have one more question in q and a uh, is what tools or methods do you find most valuable for user research holika you are on mute So when you talk about user research is to know your customer what i do is i directly talk to them i don't much rely on any other because i feel that whom you are catering their needs will be completely different to even what is present you know as a part of some other research or document that is there so the first thing is that you have to keep on questioning why and understand the pain point and what is exactly causing them trouble and it's not that what is their trouble is all the time right to address as well because sometimes they might just be asking for something which is not even required and there is a different way to handle it so that is the first thing that i do otherwise if you talk about in general so in general there is no tools and all that how uh, even preeti was saying that you talk about like to the to your seniors maybe or if you rely on some documentation like some research documentation or some consultation the consultation documentation that is around you you read the industry trends there are so many news available uh, like like there is a tech news channel there is a tech news app also which is there and we have so much of social media around it to just understand that for this product what is the user preferences so that information only you can get from whatever you read around it but if you are catering to a particular product 
the one person that can only help you is the direct user go and talk to the user and don't assume anything just talk in a way that you just tell like spill out everything what is your pain point and you have to you don't even have to suggest them you have to be in that scenario what i have noticed that more than talking listening works and you have to empathize with them that why it is that problem because then don't talk like as if you are uh, you know that you are the ambassador of the product no then you are on the customer side whatever you you can little bit even talk nasty things about your product to the customer oh, i know this is not working very well let me see what we can do so that the uh, you know user or the customer has that trust on you so the trust factor is very important to trust empathy on that basis make the communication and listen so that is one thing that i feel that has always worked when you want to understand related to the user preference yeah and listening is obviously uh, another communication skill which is absolutely essential we mm -hmm. often don't listen enough you know we don't listen to understand we are often listening to reply you know yeah. i'm just listening to say okay what is my next question yeah that's so true uh yes uh, we have one more question in qna uh, how do you balance innovation with the potential for failure interesting okay so um see it is also depending upon what level of innovation are you looking forward to are you trying to completely scrap the product and start something different as a part of innovation or are you just targeting a very small functionality and that's okay to innovate you know like Um, like something that uh, you were doing manually not tomorrow you are wanting to bring um, some copilot you know to answer that particular set of functionality so you are replacing some manual thing with a copilot which is again an innovation because previously there was someone who was doing uh, who was sitting and spending a lot of time typing and writing now you have just replaced it with a copilot now you have to understand how your uh, infrastructure is how your architecture of the product is can that latest technology be integrated or will something else will be required so all that analysis is needed to be done beforehand and the level is very important like how i said you cannot just completely scrap everything and say in the name of innovation let me innovate that you have to go step by step and even going step by step you have to completely analyze the architecture and the infrastructure around you discuss with all your stakeholders again in that situation as well it's not that you are taking that call again like all by yourself you have to sit and discuss with your technical team this is what i am thinking is it workable or do you see there is a technical uh, uh, like limitation or what is the feasibility technically available for this particular thing so when you make all these conversations you will know what is the pros what is the cons and if, even if it fails you are even ready to you know uh, bear that consequence so all that has been communicated previously that this might not work and if this will not work the system will be low for this many time if the system will get low for these many days how are we trying to handle the scenario till those many days everything is on place so you are even ready to fail but what if if you succeed if you succeed you will have a you know a new technology a new integration available for your product and that is how you build the confidence and if that fails it's okay you will try some other ways but you have already handled it so this is how you go step by step to um bring in innovation also yeah um, without innovation we would have no new products right yes, yes but yeah i understand the concern uh, you know risk, risk the risk appetite but tulika yes. you had shared yesterday when we were talking about risk mitigation right so how carefully you outline the risks when you are uh, taking on something new and uh, what mitigation uh, would be yes. you know planning yes. for that yes yes that's right that's what uh, i was just saying that even if we know that this will not work out beforehand we would be knowing yeah. it that this will be the risk this is how we will mitigate if the product will you know will not work then yeah. there will be so many non functioning days of the product so how will we handle those three non functioning days so that is risk and mitigation we have already handled yeah and if it that's okay so we we are going up with that appetite yeah absolutely yeah. and fear of failure by the way is not just limited to designing products or innovation right we we are all in that all of the time so uh, thinking about you know so wherever the the pros of success outweigh the cons of failure uh, you will take a step 
Okay, we are almost out of time. Uh, Akriti, Abhijit, any um, other thoughts? Uh, no, I guess. Uh, students, if you have any questions, you can, you know, get back to us uh, or maybe HSB Institute. They have, you know, given the website link in the chat box. Uh, any last word, ma'am, for the students? No, we are good. I hope this was useful. I hope this, um, you know, we hope. <laughs> We yes, it definitely was amazing. Through, yes. Yeah, we did rush through a lot and uh, we were ha actually hoping for more interaction uh, in the initial part, but that's fine. Uh, we got some good questions at the end. I, I, both Ulika and I are really hopeful that uh, you found this useful, that this will bring, so this wasn't, you know, it was a good use of your time. Yeah, and taking yes, out on yes. Sunday. Yes, so, exactly. Sunday morning. So yes, please visit the, the visit the website. Uh, find out more about HSP. Yes. Sure. And thank yes. you very much. Uh, thank you, Priti, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Tulika, ma'am, for your time. Uh, thank you, students, for staying. Uh, we'll see you soon again. Yes. Thank, thank you, Priti. Thank, thank you. Everyone.